All right, thank you so much, West Coast Builders, for jumping in here, earning this call. We're about to get things started with the one, the only, Meredith Teason. She is an amazing, amazing person. She has a huge part in bringing me on to Rodan and Field, so I'm super grateful for her. Um, she, she's a powerhouse woman. She's uh, an RFXer. She was formerly the national director uh, here at Rodan and Fields, and she's just rocking things out uh, in her business right now. In fact, she had an incredible month of recruiting. Um, she did some amazing things last month, and I was, I was thinking about who I could invite on this call that can really help you build your funnels and that could give you some amazing information uh, to help you move forward with your businesses. And the one, the one name that floated to the top of my list was, was Meredith. So Meredith, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much, Joe. I'm so excited and thrilled to be with you all. I love the enthusiasm as we kicked this off. So um, I'm just happy to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, so this is good. we're going to do a little Q&A here with, with uh, Meredith. And we're going to kind of dive into her business and how she does what she does and, and, and all of that jazz. So um, we'll, we'll go ahead and jump into things really quick. Things got a little bit uh, disorganized while I was like rocking my dance moves. So let me let me find my, my piece of paper here. Okay, so Meredith, why don't you talk to us a little bit about, you know, your story's a little bit unique, but why don't you talk to us a little bit about how you got started as a consultant with Rodan and Fields? Yeah, absolutely. So as you all know, my story is very unique because, you know, I've I've been with this company for a little over five years. I've gotten to work with so many amazing leaders and watching the leaders build, especially in the West, because that's where I was for such a really long time. It, it really inspired me to kind of take a chance on myself and to say, you know, if, if they can do it, I can do it too. Knowing everything that is, you know, happened from the past, knowing these doctors and where their focus is for the future and just hearing from them, just like on stage at convention, you know, when they say, you know, we're going global and we want to be the number one global company. It was something that hearing time and time again, it, it just finally was one of those things of why not now? Why not? Why not take that risk and jump in? And here's the thing, even though I've had all of this time with Rodan the Fields, a lot of you, you know, jumping into the business, when you start out or when you're starting to think about taking that leap, of faith, everybody has those nerves, y'all. It's the same for me. You still have the nerves. Uh, you still have the what ifs come up, or you know, can I do this? And again, you just have to kind of keep going back and, and watching great leaders all throughout the West. You know, Romy and and Wendy and Marianne Benedetti and and Ali Spitzberg and Natalie Flowers and all these incredible leaders. You know, you just have to sit there and say, man, watching them do this time and time again, trusting in the doctors the way that I I trust in them why not take that leap of faith and why not now? And so for me, it was really just saying, when, when am I going to make that decision? And I will tell you when it was time for me to, to step out of corporate, I will tell you guys like the travel was great and being out there with you guys in the field was great, but I was exhausted. Um, I remember, I remember, you know, being in uh, the North Bay area doing an event and people rushing to help me pack up really quick to get out, to be on a plane, to see my husband for just a few hours for date night, you know? And, and so it was really one of those things that I, I really needed a little bit different shift in a balance. And this was something that could provide that, but still being a part of a company that I trust, that I, that I know intimately and that I respect, but also who has the forward mindset of where we're going long-term on a big global scale and being a part of that. And so why not get started and why not share that with every single person that I come in contact with? You know, I was already on the planes. I would always leave events excited and talk to people and not be able to recruit them. So, you know, it was one of those things that I knew the language after watching great leaders. I knew what to say and do, but now it's time to just take that leap of faith. And I really didn't know at first. I will tell you guys, it took me a little bit of time because I really didn't know at first, you know, you do question yourself. But when you finally kind of stomp out the, the white noise, the lies, um, that doubt, it became crystal clear as to why I was gonna start. start. You know what? I absolutely love what you're what you're telling me right now, Meredith, because I, I feel like it's so easy to get into your comfort zone, right? And and growth is always on the other side of the comfort zone. You have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable 
to get the results you're really wanting in this life, right? So I absolutely love it. That's awesome. Um, okay, so next question. This one's probably my favorite question. I love asking people this that are doing really well in the business. So what is a day in the life of, of Meredith Teason look like? Like walk us through how you rock your business out. You know, give us the, the nitty gritty of what you do every day. Okay, y'all. Um, I would love to say it's a hot mess. It is a hot mess, right? Life happens. It's a hot mess. But here's the thing is that, and I love the word that, that you just said, intention. So, and my, my word for the year is intention. And that to me is such a powerful, small, powerful word. Great big things come in small, small things. Okay, so I am intentional from the time I wake up to the time I go to bed. Starting off with understanding I've got to stay out of management mode. I have to manage my time well, and I have to stay out of management mode. So for me, you guys, a normal day in my life looks a little bit like this. And I'm actually going to take you, take you through pretty much the whole day. Um, I typically wake up between 5.45 and 6 a.m. I get up and I do some, some personal development right then and there. I love to read. I am very faithful. Um, so I do some, some quiet time. I get my head on straight for the day. That is number one. Sometimes it's 15 minutes. Sometimes it's 30 minutes. But the point is I take time first and foremost to get a little bit of organization and to get a little bit of personal development so my cup is full so I can pour into other people first and foremost. The second thing, and women, ladies, we are horrible at this. The thing that we are horrible at is we are horrible at making sure that we are taking care of ourselves physically and also with nutrition. I make sure that I eat breakfast. I make sure that I go work out. I use great apps like Marco Polo, um, Facebook Messenger, and texting to touch base, quick touches, with my team, first thing in the morning. All of that is out of the way by about 9, 9.30 in the morning. I make sure of it. And then from there, I am doing reach outs. I am reaching out. I'm going through Facebook Messenger, and I'm seeing who's active that I haven't reached out to. I'm utilizing that as a key tool. I am going on Instagram, and I'm looking to see who has left a current story. I'm making sure that I'm commenting. I'm making sure that I'm reaching out to them in Messenger on Instagram. Not only that, I'm also utilizing tools like LinkedIn. I'm making sure that I'm connecting. But I will tell you guys, I limit this time to no more than about 90 minutes a day max. Because here's the thing is this is still, and becoming even more so once again, a face-to-face -face or like a great mentor and friend of mine always says, a belly-to-belly -belly business. It is about getting out of your house. I do not sit behind this computer screen or have this in my, my hand 24 seven. I make sure that I'm intentional about getting out of my house. I'm making sure that I'm intentional about joining local charities, um, fundraising things, meeting new people. I am, I am right now starting to plan every Thursday. I will be at the same coffee shop for two hours. I'm letting people know that I'm talking through to throughout the week. This is where I'll be. I, I'm inviting people to come, come hang out. If, if one person shows up, great. If nobody shows up, I'm talking to the people around me. I'm still working my business. I'm still meeting people. But here's the thing that I, I do think that is key is that Facebook for the last four to five years has really been a huge tool. The internet has been a huge tool for us to grow our business. But y'all, things are shifting. When Mark Zuckerberg is on TV saying, this is not what we intended Facebook to, to be. That is a huge message to say, we've got to shift the way we think. It's not just about posting and going anymore. Yes, yes, you still need to post. You still need to utilize that as a tool. But understand, it is not and should not be your biggest arsenal. Our biggest arsenal is this right here and getting belly to belly and person to person and sharing. Because here's the thing you can't replace in a post. You can't replace your enthusiasm and passion. You can't replace your energy. People need to feel it and experience it for themselves, for them to start knowing and seeing that they can trust you, they can feel that passion and energy, and they can draw from that. So I'm very intentional about that as well. I make sure that I utilize things like three-way calls, the, the blog stories. I'm making sure that my team that I'm talking to and as they're coming along, 
you know, they can't just rely on me for three-way calls because there's a big team. You need to have five to 10 people that you can do three-way calls with. So I am calling on leaders that I've worked with over the years to do three-way calls. I'm calling on sideline partners, downline partners, upline partners, so that I have an arsenal of people at all times. And that's really what my day looks like. I make sure that I get out of the house for at least two to four hours every single day, and then I'm back home. And some of you with kids and stuff, you can't do that every single day. I get that. But you do need to plan sometimes at least once to twice a week to get out, maybe join a couple of different mom for stride clubs, um, join some different Mother's Day out things, go to another town and, and join those. Make sure you're getting out and being intentional with your time. I'm constantly going into the mall and saying, oh my goodness, you know, I need to, I'm, I'm getting ready for a makeover and photo shoots or whatever, even if I'm not or I'm getting ready for trips with my husband or, or vacations. I need these clothes. Oh, what do you do that allows you to travel for a month? This is what I do. And then follow up. You guys, I make sure that I'm setting aside at least an hour every single day to follow up with the people that I'm reaching out to. And I am reaching out to 30 to 50 people every single day. Every single day. Because it takes 30 to, to 50 people every single day and constant follow-up and touches with them and not always about Rodan and Fields, but about that building personal relationship for you to be able to get three to four recruits or five recruits every single month. And that sounds like a lot and it is. It is. I had four people join me the week before convention and I was like, what was I thinking? I'm now going to be gone for a week. But it was okay. I gave them, I gave them quick little things that they could do on my early morning touch bases, you know, post, do a, a Facebook live, do an Instagram live, make sure that you're, you're making your chicken list, make sure that you're, you're touching these people that you want to talk to. Here's a few samples, small little things, but here's the thing. You have to make sure that you're constantly doing your funnel and your work while you're still managing your team and your time. But you don't have to look at it as mothering them. And I don't mother my team. I give them key simple things to do. I let them know they have the resources that I have at their fingertips. I don't post every email from the scoop on my team page. Don't do that because they get the email too. They can go to the scoop also. I say, go check out the scoop today, it's amazing. You'll want the assets that are in there. I am not spoon feeding or mothering them. I am giving them quick tips to go and do. And if they go and do great. And if they don't, that's okay because I'm still working my business and that's what this is about. Well, so I that's wanna, a day in a life. I want to dig into this a little bit. I, first of all, freaking love it. I, I think that this, this is absolutely amazing. Um, some of the big things that I hope you guys wrote down honestly is uh, be intentional with your time. Time it out. There's an app that, I, that I'd love for you to look into. Uh, if you want to use it, it's called 3030. And you, what, what Meredith was saying, spend X amount of time on this, that, the other. Be intentional. Put, that, put all that stuff in 3030 and say, boom, go. And it'll tell you when you should do each of those things, how much time you should be spending. Um, so just a little tip there. Be intentional with that. Also, I think the other thing that I absolutely love with what Meredith was saying is in order to get – that's the outcome you're looking for. I'm, I'm a big nerd. I always talk about like physics principles. Uh, Sir Isaac Newton's third law of physics is for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. If the reaction you're looking for in your business is to bring four people on like Meredith did last month before convention, then you better be working your booty off to make that happen. Those actions need to be ha taking place. So um, I absolutely love it. Meredith, just to repeat again, how many, con how many reach outs, how many connections are you making again to uh, each day? I'm making anywhere from 30 to 50. Okay, so now, let's dig into that a little bit. What does that look like? Yeah, it's, it's different on a day-to-day -day basis because if I'm out and about and I'm meeting people, obviously I'm bringing them in on Facebook. I'm bringing them in on Marco Polo. I love Marco Polo because you, they can see my face, my reactions, whatnot, um, and text message. So I'm bringing, I'm meeting people, I'm adding them to my funnel, and I'm making sure that they're right there. I'm reaching out to them for an event or, or to just reach out to them. Hey, girl, what's that recipe you were telling me about in the restaurant? I did that the other day because I was sitting there waiting for a table. I am just making sure that I'm 
I'm touching. So if I'm touching people out and about, the next day I might be sitting down and shooting like rapid fire personal messages or Marco Polo rapid fire, if you will, for a good you know, 30, 40, 90 minutes. I will tell you, I had a virtual event um, two weeks ago, right after convention. And the day before I had, I had my time allotted, here's my 90 minutes. I had a, a tragedy with a friend and had to go and focus on that. So that meant the next day, right before the virtual event went live, I literally sat down and I messaged 97 people through different ways of messaging them. Very intentional, right? Because I had to now make up two days in one. And from that, I wound up with 27 people who either wanted to be a part of the event, who wanted more information, who wanted to connect and get coffee. And so then it was following up with them. So each day might look a little bit different because it's not cookie cutter. But the fact is, is I set the time aside and I make sure I know what my intention is for my goals. And the only way I'm going to do and get there is if I do the work. And so that means if I miss a day due to life, because life happens, y'all, especially y'all with small kids and whatnot or other jobs, life happens. But then you can't just say that day is gone and, oh, well, the numbers aren't. No, you have to make up for it somewhere if you're going to be intentional about your goals. Absolutely. So uh, what, what I'm going to challenge everybody on this call to do is be intentional how many contacts you're going to do, how many reach outs you're going to do. And notice this, she said no more than 90 minutes doing that per day. I think that's great advice. Um, but she's doing between 30 to 50 in 90 minutes or less which means you know you gotta be efficient with that, right? So Meredith, that kind of leads me into our next question, the, max, the next question I have for you. So um, you, you've mentioned several pipelines of, of people, or, or of, of ways to connect with people, to fill your funnel. Um, this is a relationship business, obviously, right? And the more relationships and the more trust that you can build, the better, your, you know, the healthier your business will be, uh, as you just mentioned. So what, what social media platform or, you know, what, what what is your biggest, uh, what, what do I even have here? <laughs> what is your biggest recruiting pipeline? Meaning Facebook, face-to-face, -face, you know, Instagram, you know, walk us through what you feel like you connect with most people on. Um, I connect mostly face-to-face, uh, y'all. -face, Unless they're, they're long distance or whatnot, then it's, it's through Facebook Messenger or it's through Marco Polo, like I've said. Um, my biggest platform for social for my business is actually Instagram because it's one of the most underutilized tools out there. There are 46 million people on Instagram that are not on Facebook. It is the younger generation's form of social media. So if you don't know it, I got, I got some news for y'all. You better wake up and pay attention to it because it's the wave of the future the wave of the future and of your business. Facebook is becoming something that people are just scrolling through. And if you're not doing Facebook stories, it's a big miss. But I utilize my business. I will tell you guys, I utilize Facebook for more of the field who knows me posts, but I use Instagram for more of my business building posts. And you guys, be strategic when you're using hashtags and when you're, you're doing things like that because that can also build your followers and then be intentional about who you're following, how you're engaging them because it is a little bit different on Instagram on how you engage them. So you do need to learn those behaviors. But I love face-to-face. -face. Again, you can't replace my energy via, via video. or I mean, you guys are probably getting a little bit of feel, but y'all, I'm sweating over here. Like, I'm fired up. I don't know about y'all, but I get fired up. And in person, when you when you see it and feel it, hopefully you feel it. And usually that's what I get. You can feel it. No, yeah. I, I think that that's, if you weren't listening, get on Instagram. I'm telling you. I mean, listen to what Meredith is telling you right now. As she's saying it, I'm like, preach, girl. That's totally right. I mean, because honestly, this is shocking. I did a, a, a poll yesterday on the, on the level five and above page for the West Coast and asked what your biggest pipeline was. And only seven people said Instagram. I will tell you right now, the next generation, our future RFXers potentially are, the, the people who will be our top consultants in this industry who haven't even came in yet, yep. 
oftentimes don't even have Facebook. Just think yep. about that. Uh, in my past job, my boss's daughter was the social media manager for her high school. And guess which social media platform they didn't even have? Yep, Facebook. Facebook. Not even, it didn't even exist for them and they didn't want to know about it. Okay? Yep. So when she says it's the wave of the future, she means it's the freaking wave of the future. Learn it. it. It's out of your comfort zone. Maybe it's not something you want right now. It's like, oh, it's different. I don't know. Adjust because that's where, that's where our community is going. So love it. Thank you so much, Meredith. That was exactly what I wanted to hear from that. So that's great. Um, and also the face-to-face -face interaction and how important that is. It's great. It's not always available, like you said, but it's important. Plan it in your schedule. Get out to one to two times a week. I love it. Okay. All right. Um, so I'm, here, here's, here's another one that I think that, uh, I don't know if I actually prepped you for this one, but I'm going to ask it to you. Um, so if you could give some advice to your younger self, you know, uh, in terms of, of how to recruit, what would that advice be? What would you say? If I could give advice to my younger self, what would it be? Well, you know what? Here's, here's the shocking thing. So for some of y'all, you might not know, but I actually started my own direct sales company in my early 20s. I would, I mean, I'm only 30. Not really. But here's the thing that my younger self has taught my older self. It's actually different. You see, when I started my company, I literally went door to door because there was no social media platform. I was going face to face. I was doing events. I was asking friends to do events. I was getting out there 24 seven. And the thing that my younger recruiting self has taught this old dog right here in my forties who loves social media, who has seen leaders utilize this over the years to grow great networks. And again, it is a great tool. However, my younger self, I went back, I reverted back to what I know, and that's face to face and belly to belly. If it means driving six and a half hours and renting an Airbnb like I have done for this BBL, that's what I do. I'm investing in my business and again, to see people face to face. So I don't think it's, I don't think it's what would I tell my younger self because my younger self was so bold and brazen and I keep reminding myself that girl is still there because I was fearless. I had a mission. I had to make it work because I had put all my dollars into that business and that's everything I had. And I had to get people to see my vision for themselves and take it on as if it was their own vision and go and run with it, just like the doctors have done, y'all. And so that person, the younger self reminded me, I can do that again, and I can do it by going still face-to-face, door-to-door, getting out there. We're in a world we just look at who our friends are on Facebook and we go to them. That's, again, you guys, this is a great tool. But one of the stats that I want to share as well is uh, we did a poll a while back, and 70% of our consultants utilize only social media to grow their business. 70%. That's great, but again, it is starting to trend down and statistics in direct sales are saying that it's trending down. It's shifting for one to a younger platform that, that people are not utilizing, and two, it's shifting down because people want interaction. They want to be social again. And this is a social network that can make us antisocial. So it's more of, I've been taking notes, Joe, from my younger self, more than I've been taking notes from my older self. And my younger self would have told my older self, like, girl, you should have done this a lot sooner. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, that, that, that's great. Um, that kind of leads me into the next question here. So there is a limited amount of time everyone has every day, right? Um, and there's a lot of crap that you could potentially have to do. And it's important to put first things first. So my question for you would be, if there was between three and four things that would be the, act, the, the, the crucial activities, if you're only gonna do three or four things in a day, what would you tell uh, you know, everyone on the call today in terms of uh, what, would, what would be those actions you'd recommend they do? You guys, here's the thing. It doesn't matter if, if you only have 10 to 15 minutes a day, 
be intentional about with those 10 to 15 minutes. You can grow a great business in 10 to 15 minutes a day. You can. However, you can't be going to the team page and looking and seeing what's going on in the team page. You can't be going and looking at your team and messaging. You have to be intentional with those 10 to 15 minutes about your personal reach outs and your follow-ups. Your business is all about what you do. I had um, the incredible uh, Wendy Green on my team page last night and her comment is so important for you guys. You have to get to a place where you are way more concerned about your business and what you're doing day in and day out to grow your personal front line and your preferred customers than you are about anything else. And that should always be your focus. I know that you guys hear us talk about, you know, the 80-20 rule or 70-30, but those stats are there for a reason because those who are going to be our next big RFXers, those who are going to be the number one earners in the company who have had not even been, true story, have not even come into the company yet, maybe not even born yet, Kid you not, y'all, Joe and I have seen it. I've been in this channel for tw almost 20 years. You guys, you have to be growing your front line first and foremost. And so if you're gonna be doing activities that you only can do 10 to 15 minutes, that means that you need to be doing reach outs, you need to post, and then you need to do follow-ups. And you need to just constantly be doing that. And you can never let somebody go. I always say that if you let, if you stop following up with somebody, you lose the right to claim them as your prospect. It is your conscious choice. You have to be diligent about growing your frontline first and foremost. Can't preach that enough. I think that that's absolutely awesome. So uh, again, moving back to reiterating what she said, uh, post. And, and identify when you're going to post and what you're going to post and who you're going to speak to. So write down how many times you're going to post and which platforms you're going to post on. Make that your goal and get that crap done, right? Then write down how many, uh, how many people you're going to connect with that day. Challenge yourself. And if you put a time limit to it, so you're not just watching how to do the smoky eye videos and kitten, you know, stuff on YouTube, <laughs> right? you will get so much more done. So pick how many people you're going to contact, how many people you're going to invite, and how many people you're going to follow up with every day. Pick those and run with them. Go ahead. And I'll, I'll say this to you guys because I see this a lot, even, even with my team. Don't overthink it. Don't overthink it. Just, just five, four, three, two, one, that, and just go. Don't overthink your post and don't overthink um, what you're going to say to somebody. Don't overthink it. You just have to reach out. And if your heart and enthusiasm is in the right place, and here's another thing. Here's another little key tip, because women, listen up. Don't be reaching out if you're in a sour mood. Or if you just got off that phone call with that drainable team member, it will come across, and you won't sound as authentic or as genuine or with as much energy, and it will turn people off. So understand when you're in your element of like, man, I'm feeling good, that's when you reach out. You don't reach out to your team, you reach out to your prospects it, when you're like that. When you're high on life and things are great, because you're gonna get more high on life and things are gonna get even better when that one person reaches back and says, I was thinking about this, then you take all of that energy and you take it to your team if you have time. That's it. Okay, that is also mic drop. And, 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 I, and it's going to go back to put yourself in that. Listen to what Meredith was saying about take care, taking care of yourself. If you're eating crappy and you're not working out at, or you're skipping meals, you're going to get hangry and you're going to get pissy and people ain't going to want to be on the pissy train, right? They're going to be on the like awesome, fun, enthusiastic train. So uh, take care of yourself. You know, listen to that personal development. Um, plan that in your day as well. Love it, Meredith. Um, okay, so... Meredith, those are my questions I've got for you today. I'm just going to give you, you have anything else you want to say in terms of just closing up the call today? You know, I do. So y'all, I want to leave you with this. So when I decided to come in and I decided what my goals were, and that's a key, that's a key word. I decided I made a conscious decision to be intentional about what that work looked like, because y'all, it's work. And I get it, trust me, I get it. Sometimes you're like, you wake up and you're like, I gotta do the same thing over again. 
But those same activities, it's like going to the gym. You don't see the results sometimes right away. It takes months, years for you to get the little horseshoe cut out, right, in your body. Like, it takes a long time. It takes, it takes being intentional, but it also takes dedication. You guys, you need to understand how intentional are you, are you with your daily routine, monthly routine, routine, yearly routine? And what does that dedication look like? It can't be spontaneous and sporadic. You have to get to a place where if you are lacking in skill, it's, it comes down to two things. It's either skill or will. If it's a skill issue, you guys, Google it. There's a YouTube video on it. Go get the information, plug in. There are books out there. There are things that you can plug in and do. But you need to understand if it's a will issue. Because if you're saying to yourself, oh, well, I can't do this because you know, I dropped my kids off at school, and, or you know, I can't do this because you're, you're telling yourself you are not willing to do to get. And you've got to come to that realization. So first decide if it's a skill or will. There's information out there. Be intentional. Have the dedication. Have the grit. You know, you guys, you get to decide. There is motivation books out there. There is tapes out there. There is so many amazing books written by our great leaders. You can get all of those things. But if you don't sweat and apply those things, all you're doing is getting them, reading them, and putting the information over there. They are not going to get you where you want to go if you do not apply what they're telling you to go do. And y'all, this is an easy, duplicatable system. It is easy and duplicatable, absolutely. Is it work? Yes. Is sometimes it's mundane and routine? Yes. But when you know exactly what your goals are and you have intention to go after those goals, I went and reached out to a thousand people the first month in business, a thousand. And it was difficult, so difficult. But I was intentional about what I want to do. I am intentional about the time that I want back with my husband. It means something to me. And if you don't have what your goal is and it doesn't mean something to you to where you will do whatever it takes, you are not going to get there. you got to decide. Marianne Benedetti, I'm going to say, she reached out to me and she told me one day her goal was to bring Steve home. And she, I said, what are you going to do to get it? And she said, I am willing to do whatever it takes. And she brought him home within months of that phone call. And she did whatever it takes. Romy Neustadt, Wendy Green, all of them have done whatever it takes. Wendy Green did eight events on average every month for two years, not tucking her kids in. She was willing to do what it took to buy back time later on. I'm willing to do whatever it takes. Are you? What else can I say? That was absolutely amazing. Um, Meredith, we are so thankful that you were able to jump on this call with us today. Thank you for sharing your wisdom with us today. The, the, the ask that Meredith and I have for you today is to take what you've learned and put it into practice. Okay. Um, so thank you so much for earning this call. Uh, for those of you who jumped on through your leader, we challenge you next month, earn this call for your, your team as well. Make sure that you are part of that uh, Builders Club. Uh, you can do anything you want if you put your mind to it. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Meredith. And we'll catch you all next month. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.